In the past days, one woman's sudden disappearance has grabbed national attention, becoming a headline news event and garnering massive attention on TikTok and Twitter. After going on a cross-country tour with her boyfriend, she went missing for weeks and sadly was ultimately found dead. Her name was Gabrielle Petito, and this is her story. On March 19, 1999, in Blue Point, New York, a beach town near Long Island, Gabrielle Petito was born. She lived a rather bohemian lifestyle. Like many young women, she enjoyed coffee and art, and more than anything, she loved to travel and did so often as can be seen on her Instagram. There, she often posted pictures of her many travels, including around her native New York, different parts of the U.S. such as California and Utah, and abroad. She even had a post from Costa Rica just five years ago. So when she met Brian Laundrie, her boyfriend, and the main person of interest in her disappearance, the two fell in love quite naturally. After all, Laundrie, like Gabby, is an avid traveler and perhaps a bigger art fan than Gabby herself. The two started dating on March 17, 2019, just days before Gabby's 20th birthday. By July 2nd, they were engaged, although Gabby's mom Nicole Schmidt says that they had rescinded their engagement and gone back to just dating. A year later, on July 2nd, 2021, the couple left from New York in Gabby's van, a white 2012 Ford Transit which the couple had modified together months before, as you can see here. Their goal was to tour the country and arrive in Oregon to celebrate Halloween with a friend. By July 5th, they arrived in Monument Rocks, Colorado, a nearly straight shot drive about 2,000 miles from her home city. They toured around for a while, visiting sites such as the Colorado Springs and the Grand Sand Dunes National Park before moving into neighboring Utah sometime between July 10th and 12th. There, they continued touring around, visiting Zion National Park, Cedar Breaks, and more. While Gabby was enjoying herself, her boyfriend was concealing a dark motive. They spent much more time in Utah than in Colorado, so by mid-August they were still there. And so, on August 12th, a little bit before 5 p.m., the couple were stopped by police after a witness caught in a domestic violence situation. When officers arrived, Gabby was visibly distraught, as can be seen on body cam footage from the incident. She said she was scared that Brian was going to take the van and leave her behind. This makes sense as he was in the driver's seat and she said she had to climb over him just to get in. At this point, the officer put Gabby in his car to calm down, with her telling him that she was stressed and had OCD, which she believed caused her to behave in a way that made Laundry mad. As police interviewed Laundry, he showed great charisma, immediately manipulating the situation to his advantage. He made cops believe that Gabby was completely at fault, even saying that she slapped him with her phone, leaving scratches on his face. When asked about these scratches, Gabby said that he grabbed her face, implying that he was the aggressor. This is consistent with the 911 call which prompted police involvement, as the caller said Laundry viciously slapped his girlfriend. Caught up in Laundry's charisma, the cops didn't even stop to consider why Gabby was so distraught. They just chalked it up to anxiety problems and separated the two for the night, leaving Gabby with the van and sending Brian to a safe haven hotel. Later, after the search for Gabby began, the safe haven stated that while a nonprofit did book a room that night, it could not confirm that Brian was ever there. The next day, on August 13th, they visited Woody's Tavern in Moab, Utah, about 200 miles southwest of Salt Lake City. This might not seem like anything at first, but it's actually the same tavern and same day that two women, 24-year-old Kylan Schulte and 38-year-old Kristen Tanner, visited before dying. The women, who frequently traveled around Utah, complained about a creepy man they met there, with one of them even telling their friend, if something happens to us, we were murdered. And murdered they were. After last being seen leaving the tavern at 8.30pm, their bodies were found a few days later, undressed from the waist down and riddled with bullet wounds in a creek near a campsite in South Mesa, Utah. Their case is still ongoing. To stay updated, please subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more stories like this one. Since they both visited this tavern on the same day, some people believe Gabby's disappearance is connected to their murders. A Utah sheriff has also said that the two cases are not connected, but due to Brian staying the night within 30 miles of where the girls were murdered, it's certainly possible. Connected or not, the couple moved on. On August 19th, on their personal YouTube channel, Nomadic Static, they posted their first and only video highlighting the sights and meals of their trip so far. One chilling detail about the video is that, at one point, Laundry can be seen reading a 2014 novel named Annihilation. In the novel, a group of women explore a cut-off coastal area named Area X. Three of the women die, and one ends up missing forever. Even more chilling, one of the women's husbands, who had previously gone to explore the area, showed up home unexpectedly, just as Brian would show up home in Florida over two months ahead of schedule. 
Later, on August 24th, they were seen leaving a hotel in Salt Lake City, Utah, and the next day, Gabby FaceTime called her mother telling her that she was in Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming, a little over five hours north of their last location. This was the last call she ever made to her family or friends. After this, there were only texts, Snapchats, and an Instagram post whose credibility are questionable. The next day, August 25th, Gabby posted several photos in front of a monarch butterfly mural in Ogden, Utah, just north of Salt Lake City. In the photos, she was holding a crocheted pumpkin and captioned the post, Happy Halloween. As weird as that may seem, the last photo, a mirror selfie with a blur filter, is even more bizarre. Since the couple's end goal was to be in Oregon for Halloween, her last post having that caption raises questions. Could Laundry have captioned it, already knowing that it would be her last post? The same day, Gabby Snapchatted one of her friends to tell her that they would be in Yellowstone National Park soon, only 40 minutes north of Grand Teton. After that, Gabby and Brian were reportedly seen causing a commotion in a Wyoming restaurant on the 27th. According to Nina Angelo, a tourist from Louisiana who happened to eat at the Mary Piglet's Tex-Mex in Jackson, Wyoming that night, Gabby was seen crying and leaving the restaurant as an irate Brian went in and out several times to yell at the hostess staff. The restaurant has confirmed on its Instagram page that Gabby was there and that they are helping the FBI to the best of their abilities. She would later text her mom saying, can you help Stan, her grandfather? I just keep getting his voicemails and missed calls. Her mother notes that this was weird as Gabby never called her grandfather by that name. On the same day, a Van Life YouTube vlogging couple from Florida spotted Petito's van in the Sprague Creek dispersed camping area. As can be seen on screen, her sandals were behind the van and the doors were closed. Naturally, the vloggers didn't make anything of this at the time, but Gabby's body would actually be found in this same creek weeks later, as announced by the FBI on September 19th. Putting all this together, it seems likely that Gabby didn't survive past the 27th. However, the text continued. She went on to not text her best friend for her birthday on August 29th, which her best friend found weird as they were supposed to plan to meet up at Yellowstone. The next day, August 30th, she would send her last text ever. She told her mom, no service in Yosemite, ostensibly mistaking Yellowstone for Yosemite, which was 800 miles away from Grand Teton. Her mother and best friend both deny the text being hers, with her best friend saying she'd likely have just called her mom when she did have service. The text likely came from Brian, as Gabby never made it to Yellowstone. Instead, her body was found in Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming on September 19th. Two days after Gabby's last text, on September 1st, Brian arrived home to Northport, Florida in Gabby's van, but Gabby wasn't with him. This worried her family, who went to the police about her disappearance days later. On September 11, 2021, an investigation was opened and a search for Gabby began. Rather than assist the search, Laundry remained silent, choosing to get a lawyer and not cooperate with police efforts to find his girlfriend. This made him a suspicious character to many people, not the least of which were the Northport Police and the FBI, who both declared him a person of interest in their investigations. On September 17th, Laundrie's attorney announced that he too was missing and that the FBI was searching for him as well. They visited his parents' home to collect some items to aid the search and Northport Police reported that his parents said they hadn't seen him since Tuesday the 14th. Florida police searched the 24,000 acre nature reserve after a suggestion from his parents, but to no avail. His whereabouts are still unknown. What happened between August 25th and August 30th that made Brian come home early without Gabby? Why didn't he report her missing himself? And why didn't he assist the police when they came to him? Why does he appear to be on the run now? Did he kill Gabby Petito and run? Is his family helping him hide? Only time will tell as the investigation is still ongoing. What we do know is that Gabby is dead and Laundry, far from convicted, is her likely killer. Her body, sadly, was discovered in Wyoming's Grand Teton National Park as was confirmed by the FBI in a September 19th press conference held nearby. An autopsy confirmed the body was hers and her death was ruled a homicide, but her cause of death is not yet known. In the meantime, the FBI is still searching diligently for Brian Laundrie and any clues to help understand just what happened in Wyoming that led to her death. If Brian Laundrie is found, he'll certainly be the prime suspect. There are reported laundry sightings in Mobile, Alabama, to the west of his native Florida, but these are unconfirmed. Some pictures floating around on the internet suggest he's still in Florida. Even bounty hunting legend Dog the Bounty Hunter is involved, saying the search is personal for him. He will apparently focus on the Appalachian Trail, where many believe laundry to be hiding out. It's not without precedent, 
One serial bomber, Eric Rudolph, was able to survive for five years in the Appalachian Trail before being caught in 2003, and Laundrie was seen traveling the same trail with Gabby in March. Finally, a hard drive was discovered in Gabby's van, which police believe will aid the investigation. <laughs>